On Sunday the 26th of August 1979, a family were hunting for arrowheads within Buffalo Cave, located in the Civil Defence Cave Network in Clark County near Dubois, Idaho. As they explored the cave, they unexpectedly stumbled across a shallow grave. Within it lay the headless, dismembered remains of a man wrapped up in burlap. The man was wearing dark trousers, a white shirt with blue pinstripes and a maroon shirt. The investigation quickly stalled, with no further clues about the circumstances of the man's death, who was responsible for the murder and the identity of the deceased. On the 30th of March 1991, almost 12 years after the body was discovered, an 11-year-old girl who was scouting caves near Rexburg found a mummified hand. Once authorities were notified, they inspected the caves further and, following an excavation, discovered an arm and two legs, which were also tucked within Hessian fabric. Anthropologists were contacted by police to examine the remains. However, with very little evidence, the investigation moved at a glacial pace. That was until Buffalo Cave John Doe's remains were examined by members of several different scientific and anthropologic associations. It was determined that the man was Caucasian and of European descent, standing between 5 foot 6 and 6 foot 2, with brown reddish hair, was between the ages of 35 and 45 when he died, and at the time authorities believed that the post-mortem interval was 5 to 10 years. The murder weapon was never found, but authorities believed that John Doe was killed and subsequently dismembered with several different sharp weapons. With the case turning cold, Idaho authorities requested help from the DNA Doe Project. The DNA Doe Project is a non-profit organisation based in California that uses advanced modern forensic technology and techniques to identify the deceased through genetic genealogy. The organisation was founded in 2017, with the main goal being reuniting John and Jane Doe's with their loved ones. And as of June 2020, the DNA Doe Project have identified over 25 individuals, many of whom were unidentified for several decades. After having their Buffalo Cave John Doe campaign funded by donations from the public, the DNA Doe project extracted, sequenced and analysed the man's DNA. And after many months of hard work, it was announced by Clark County Sheriff Bart Mary on the 31st of December 2019 that the DNA Doe project had successfully determined the individual's genetic and genealogical heritage and a genetic match was made to a living grandchild of the deceased. At last, John Doe had his name returned to him. After thousands of hours researching the man's complex family tree, it was revealed that his name was Joseph Henry Loveless, who was born in Payson, Utah Territory on the 3rd of December 1870 to Mormon parents Joseph Jackson Loveless and Sarah Jane Scriggins Loveless. His grandfather was a polygamist with four wives, making the task of finding his identity especially difficult for researchers. Joseph married Harriet Jane Savage in Salt Lake City in 1899 and together they had one child. Just five years later, in 1904, Harriet divorced Joseph on the grounds of desertion. 
In 1905, Joseph, who had moved to Idaho, married for the second time to Agnes Octavia Caldwell, native of Bear Lake County, Idaho, and the couple had four children. On the night of the 5th of May 1916, Agnes Lovelace was brutally slain by an axe-wielding man named in the media as Walt Cairns, with authorities publishing wanted posters seeking the fugitive around the state. At Agnes's funeral, one of her children said that their father, Joseph, was incarcerated for the crime. He allegedly killed her after she returned from a local dance and their eight-year-old son found her lifeless body. During his life of crime, where he was arrested for bootlegging, alcohol violations and escaping from custody, Joseph Lovelace used numerous aliases, including Walter Cairns. Some of the identities used were Walter Cairns, Walter Curran, Walter Garin, Walter Kernans, Henry Lovelace and Charles Smith. On the 18th of May, the 46-year-old, booked under the name Walter Cairns, escaped from St Anthony Jail. He freed himself from his prison cell by retrieving a blade he kept hidden in one of his shoes and sawed through the bars. It was reported that Lovelace laid low and lived in a tent on the outskirts of Dubois, Idaho for the remainder of 1916. What happened to Joseph Lovelace after the sighting remains a mystery. When his remains were discovered in 1979, he was wearing the same clothes listed on Walt Cairns's wanted poster. Therefore, it is assumed that he died shortly after fleeing from prison. However, the circumstances surrounding his death remain unclear. The case is still active, with the hunt for Joseph's killer ongoing. However, since it has been over a century since his death, it is likely that few clues will be found. Many have theorised that he was murdered by a person seeking revenge for Agnes Lovelace's death. Justice, however, was not officially served for Agnes, who was mercilessly slaughtered by her husband for reasons unknown. Interestingly, a Joseph Henry had a gravestone in the Loveless family plot located in Payson City Cemetery, Utah, which was later found to be a cenotaph. As well as the tomb being empty of mortal remains, there was no record of interment found for the plot. The identification of Joseph Lovelace of Buffalo Cave is said to be the oldest of its kind to date that has been solved by genetic genealogy, and it would not have been possible without the tireless efforts of law enforcement and the DNA Doe Project. Thank you.